Hey guys, welcome back to week seven of my MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So uh, last week I had a bit of a technical issue and that's what prevented me from uploading the weekly video. Hopefully all that's fixed now and I'll be able to continue updating you guys every week on the progress of the challenge. Um, I've been working on four classes in parallel and today I want to talk about the first actual computer science class I've done so far for the challenge, which is 601 Introduction to Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Now this is MIT's intro to computer science and programming and electrical engineering, uh, but the assumption going into the class is that you've already done some programming in high school, you're already familiar with programming in another language. So the course has very little in giving you the basics of you know, functions, variables, loops, conditional statements, uh, object orientation. There's very little of that in the actual course. So the assumption is that you kind of have already learned that, which I think is something that might be a little bit daunting if you're thinking you wanted to learn computer science going through this MIT approach. You might feel, well, I already have to know a bit of computer science before I can even do it. So one of the things that I used is that this entire class is taught in Python. And Google Code Academy has a really good introduction to the Python programming language. So if you want to learn Python, but maybe you don't want to go into all the theory that would be in state machines and advanced algorithms that would be in this type of class for an MIT setting, then I suggest going Code Code Academy because it's a really good way to learn Python, which is a programming language that's similar to Java, but in my opinion, a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. And you can learn that language. They give you all those resources there, and that's also completely for free. Now, one of the challenges that I've had is that when I am reading a book or a textbook, I really like to mark up the notes. I like to underline things. I like to put my own notes. I like to circle things that I think are important because I feel this style of reading where you're very actively going through the notes and doing things, it makes it easier to focus. But the problem is that the course notes, so the course textbook that's free online for this class, is just in PDF form. So, you know, unless I want to spend hundreds of dollars on printing, just printing it off on paper, um, it's kind of hard to just get at it because it's three, four hundred pages. So what you can do actually is you can use Lulu, which does on-demand book printing. And so I just uploaded the course notes, as you can see uh, here, and got them to print me off a copy for pretty cheap, actually only about like 20 bucks. And I have a full copy, which I can draw on and write to my heart's content. And it's like a, pay it's like a textbook. So um, although this isn't a project-based class, in that uh, the final basis of evaluation I'm using is the final exam and uh, they do have some small assignments that were in the actual course curriculum but a lot of them involve using this robot that I don't have access to so it isn't one of the classes where I'm going to be doing huge programming assignments I still wanted to get my feet wet in terms of programming both so that I could do well on the exam for this class and also to familiarize myself with some of the you know setup for MIT and how I'm going to be doing some of these programming assignments so I worked on three little mini projects um, the first one that I did was building an A-star pathfinding algorithm. So if you've never heard of this before, this is a way of finding the quickest route between two points. So, you know, if you're using Google Maps, they'll use some variety of this algorithm, most likely, to figure out what road network to use when you're typing in a destination and a starting point. And similarly, if you're using a video game, for example, you might want the enemy to chase after the player around obstacles. Well, you can use this algorithm to tell the enemy how to move around the terrain in order to get to the character as quickly as possible. So it's a very important algorithm in terms of artificial intelligence and also just in terms of a whole class of problems which involve graph searching. And so I did a short implementation of that in Python. Um, and the second thing that I worked on was a state machine library. And so this is something that they talk about in the book, but they only give sort of sketchy examples. I wanted to build out the actual library that they're talking about from scratch so that I could really understand what they're talking about in terms of state machines. So a state machine is basically an autonoma which, uh, and you can have very basic state machines that just do very simple things like, you know, multiply a number or they'll add a number together or they'll provide feedback or they'll provide delay. And then you can hook all these machines together and run the combined machine to get some interesting outputs. And it's probably not that useful in the context that I actually made it in because you could probably write a simpler program that doesn't involve state machines. But state machines and thinking about them is very important in computing in general just because a lot of computers and a lot of computing processes can be thought of in terms of state machines. So getting comfortable with that language of state machines and how they hook together and uh, linear time invariant systems can give you that sort of 
starting point to really understand complicated systems, which may not be so easy to do without them. And the final thing that I worked on was a Bayesian state estimator, which built on that state machine library. And basically this uses a Bayes rule, which is a very famous rule in statistics and probability as a way for you to update your belief in the evidence of a system. So in this example here, you have a copy machine, which uh, randomly breaks down at certain points in time. And even when it's working properly, it gives kind of bad copies some of the time. And you have this Bayesian state estimator, which is separate from it, and it tries to predict, is the copier working properly uh, based on the type of output that it's getting? So this is something that, you know, it's kind of a trivial example that I actually built into the code. But the basic rule of Bayes is very important for all sorts of artificial intelligence research. So really getting comfortable with this concept now will really help me on later when I'm doing 6034, which is the AI class where I have to really understand artificial intelligence and use it in a much more sophisticated way for you know, object recognition and vision and those kinds of things which are really interesting problems. So that's sort of the, the crux of this course is that it's really introducing uh, Python as a programming language uh, and the basics of programming and also the basics of these theories which are very useful when you're doing very advanced programs later. So as you can see from the board here, that's not the only class I'm doing. I'm doing four classes right now. So the other three are differential equations, which I've been writing down the concept summary, which I've also been trying to learn over the last month, and biology and chemistry. Now, this is my last week of it. So next week, I'm writing the exams for these classes. So wish me luck, and hopefully I'll have some good news for you in my week eight update. And if you've liked this video and you want to stay in track with the challenge, then you can subscribe below and you can also visit the homepage where I'm posting all the free materials I'm using, all the results I'm having and all of these videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.